Dear students, welcome to EPAT Sala. I am Nitya from uh, Civil Department. Today I am going to deliver a lecture on methods of construction of walls, roofs and ceiling and its types. Construction is the process of constructing any type of residential and non-residential structures. The process involves the construction of substructure and superstructure. Substructure includes the construction of foundation and superstructure includes the construction of wall, floor, a roof, door, window, etc. This chapter discusses the function, materials, types, method of construction of wall, roof and ceiling. The objectives includes to impart knowledge on material used in construction of walls and roof, to understand the methods of construction of walls and roof. Method of construction of wall, first let us see the what is the definition of wall. It is a structural element that divides the floor area as needful to human beings. What are the functions of wall? Able to provide protection from any environmental conditions, divide the areas as a purpose of utilization, perform as soundproof. If wall accident with fire, it attenuate the spread of fire to another building, enhance the building aesthetics and to provide privacy. Next we will see what are the materials used for the wall construction. The selection of material is very important in construction. To satisfy the present environmental condition, the selection of material should be sustainable, cost effective, adequate strength, availability and durability. Material utilized for the wall construction are generally classified into two types based on the occurrence of materials and namely naturally occurring and man-made substance. Naturally occurring substance, first one is the mud and clay. There are two types in clay based building walls. One is made up of mud mixtures and other substance is built by stacking air dried building blocks called mud bricks. Similarly, clay in building is mixed with a straw to produce a light clay. Next one is the structural clay blocks. The structural mud bricks are mostly produced by clay soil mixing with the binder materials namely sand, lime, concrete and stone. The compressed block is then air dried. And next one is the sand. Countries with the high sand content soil is called sandcrete block. This type of block is weaker for structural usage but economical than clay blocks. Whereas sand is mixed with the cement or lime can make mortar for masonry work and plastering. Stone or rock. It is a naturally occurring long lasting building material. It is abundantly available throughout the world also readily available material. Since its dense property it gives strength to building construction. But its limitation is weight and greater energy utilized for making finer. In ancient period the most of the buildings monuments and temples were built only by stones. Next one is the touch. It is one of the ancient building material in the construction. It is mainly used to construct huts by tribes. It is uh, acting as a heat repellent agent. So in modern construction also it is uh, laid over the special rich tides. The main drawback is protection against fire is indispensable. Next one is the wood and timber. Since thousands of years wood has been used as building material. Wood is tree products. Processed wood is called timber. Timber is available in the form of boards and planks. It has a property of malleable under loads and can be used in extreme climatic conditions. The strength can be increased when compressed vertically. Next we will see man-made substances. First one is the fired bricks. A brick is the most commonly used material for the construction of wall especially in India. The difference between mud or clay blocks and brick is bricks are burnt in clean at a temperature of 1200 degrees centigrade. Brick walls are constructed to join by mortar with arrangements of brick bonding. Brick bonding is the arrangement of bricks in walls and column. Brick bonding includes stretcher bond, header bond, English bond and Flemish bond etc. Bonding ensures the strength of the building, uniform distribution of loads in the building and aesthetic appearance. Generally brick bondings are bricks laid as standing upright that is a soldier laid as a lengthwise of a wall that is a stretcher and laid as a widthwise of wall that is a header. Vertical joint of brick in each core should be avoided. Different types of brick bond pattern are given as 
stretcher bond header bond flemish bond and english bond stretcher bond means in this bond bricks are laid as a longer phase in elevation this type can be used for partition wall construction header bond means width of the brick can be seen in elevation this type can be used for the construction of one thick brick wall and flemish bond is in this arrangement alternate stretcher and header are placed in same course it is the strongest bond relative to other bonds formed panels it is a form of interlocking blocks or panels in this concrete is mixed with synthetic polyesterine or polyurethane foam to make lightweight structural panels also foam can sandwiched between wood or cement to make panel boards glass as for the structural important of buildings glass is the predominant material in the construction of wall the elegance of modern buildings is improved by glass panels gypcrete the composition of gypcrete is a gypsum paste and fiberglass rovings it has been used for many years especially for ceilings after the study of strength and quantities of walling system using this mixture of gypsum and fiberglass roving it is been used for the construction of wall it has a significant strength as load bearing wall and possesses fire thermal and earthquake resistance properties moreover since a gypcrete material is a completely recyclable provides more environmental benefits next one is a metal metal is mainly used for the construction of prefabricated structure generally it is used larger buildings namely skyscrapers and exterior surface coverings corrosion is the major disadvantage in the metal buildings but it can be avoided by using a steel alloy which is combining steel with aluminum zinc tin etc precast concrete precast concrete blocks are made at off site and transported to on site precast concrete can be made as a solid block or wall panel this makes the construction very quicker time savings available in desired color aesthetic appearance superior durability and strength safety and protection ease of insulation consistent quality also environmental friendly next classification of walls walls can be classified based on the function and purpose first we'll see based on the function of wall how it is been classified the function of wall means how the load of the building is being transferred to soil through foundation there are two types of walls such as first one is a load bearing wall and second is a non load bearing wall in load bearing walls the load from roof floor is carried only by wall of 9 inch or more thickness beams and columns are not constructed in this type in brick masonry first class bricks are being used the disadvantages of this buildings are not possible to rise the building more than 2 to 3 stories utility space of the building is reduced due to 9 inch thick wall and buildings with Uh, this type are not able to withstand dynamic loads non load bearing walls this is said to be framed structure in framed structure slab beam and column are the main structural elements therefore load from slab is transferred to beam from beam to column and column to foundation footings no load is transferred through wall except dead load that is the self weight of the wall so that the size of the wall can be reduced more number of stories can be raised by this method it is the most effective for dynamic loading conditions next we'll see what are the classification of walls based on the purpose that is a bustering wall it is the two walls perpendicular to each other both support each other support is being given from base to top cavity wall it is two layer of masonry or constructed separately to prevent the penetration of moisture and it acts as the thermal insulator next is a compartment wall a wall which is a constructed as a compartment to protect the speed of smoke heat and toxic gases external wall it is a wall for external enclosure of building partition wall it is a non load bearing wall which divides the area of the building party wall 
a wall is constructed on one owner's land but it is used by two or more owners separating wall the wall that separates two lands and it is a common to both owners of the land of adjoining building solid wall this is constructed by only one type of wall material and it does not include a cavity between the external and internal wall supported wall the lateral support is offered wall by combination of blustering wall piers or chimneys in conjunction with the floor or roofs trom wall a building that utilizes a grouping of thermal mass and glazing together and store solar radiation so that it can be used to heat the buildings next we'll see what are the occurrence of structural problems in walls cracks in internal and external walls this problem is mainly due to the failure of foundation these types of cracks can be filled by branded filler materials damp spots appearing on the internal walls damp spots and water penetration on walls are caused by number of reasons one of the reason is condensation due to condensation the warm humid air inside room when hits the wall which causes a motion in air and deposited on wall this can be solved by maintaining heat and providing proper ventilation in buildings also drying wet cloths should be avoided inside rooms and providing proper ventilation in kitchen next is the water penetration water find its ways to enter into the building walls through cavities especially water enters from ground to walls this can be avoided by placing damp proof membranes crack at the joint between ceilings and walls water falling out of brickwork and disintegration of bricks due to defective construction this problem is occurred spalling of mortar from brick wall is mainly by easy penetration of moisture into wall this can be avoided by provided with rich mortar wall bulging this is the failure occur in wall ties which hold internal wall and external wall together next we'll see method of construction of roof and ceiling roof and ceiling are provided in overhead of superstructure which is very important structural element in transferring of load the main difference between roof and ceiling is the roof is the exterior surface of overhead and ceiling is interior surface of overhead for example a three story building has only one roof but three ceilings the selection of roof for a building is a depending on many factors namely type of building type of foundation load of the building exposure of the light air circulation aesthetic and economy next we'll see functions of roof and ceiling it provides a complete enclosure for the building it carries load it protects the building from all environmental conditions namely heat cold rain and wind it controls the diffusion of light sound dampness and fire in and out next we'll see classification of roof generally roof is classified into flat roof and pitched or sloped roof flat roof flat roof means it is not completely flat it has a slope less than 10 degree this the small inclination is given to drain water the top roof can be utilized effectively as gardening place for accommodating heating and cooling units also flat roof design is simple and economical than pitched roof next is a sloped roof there are different types in this first one is a gable roof it is also known as a pitched roof roof slope is given in two directions it provides more spacious simple in design and construction but in this type of roof is not suitable for the high wind and hurricane area next is a hip roof roof slope is given in all four directions all four sides come together and form a ridge it is a more durable in any climatic conditions whereas design is complex and expensive mansard roof it is known as a french roof this is also four sided slope but double slope on each side is provided so as to form a low pitched roof this type of roof tend style and aesthetic appeal to the building next is a skillion roof it is also known as a shed roof with a single slope 
in which one ball is a taller and another is shorter this type is mostly applied for home additions like porches and shed it is not suitable for more wind prone areas jerkin head roof it is a combination of gable and hip roof this type of roof is a constructed as a body of gable roof and end with hip roof this type gives more aesthetic appeal but more complex design makes more expensive next is a butterfly roof this is constructed as a v shaped roof outside section is provided with angle up and angle down in mid section this appears as the effect of butterfly gives natural ventilation at outside wings this makes the building as energy efficient due to its natural ventilation so the modern eco friendly buildings can be constructed by this type of roofs the design is a complex and more expensive bonnet roof this is also referred as a double sloped roof the lower slope has less angular than upper slope the porch of building can be covered by the hang of lower slope this hang not only covering the porches also protect the wall from water damage it is more difficult to construct salt box roof this type of construction of roof makes a symmetrical design two different slopes are provided with one side has slight slope and other side has steep slope this is more suitable for heavy rainfall areas the asymmetrical design makes the building more durable the complex design makes in expensive and saw tooth roof in this two or more pitched roofs are fixed parallel to each other it has sloped and vertical surfaces alternatively the elevation of the building resembles as a saw blade it is preferred for modern residential buildings it allows more natural light through the vertical surface of the roof it is suggested for eco friendly building as it provides convenience for solar panel fixing the cost of construction is more expensive than other types of roof curved roof in this type of roof roof panels are like curved shape it improves the aesthetic of the building in modern construction the curved roof is durable when the roof slope is less in high wind areas pyramid roof it is like a hip type of roof in which four sides of roof are meeting together at the top this type does not have gables or vertical sides it has excellent resistance against high wind condition also provides high ceiling ventilation and very good architectural view dome roof it is an inverted bowl shaped polygonal structure it offers pleasing and beautiful appearance the cost of construction is expensive due to complex in design it can be constructed with prefabricated slabs next we'll see what all the factors to be considered for the selection of roof materials durability weight appearance eco friendly slope fire and safety and cost next are the what all the roof materials can be used roof materials are either natural or man made the natural materials are slate and wood the man made materials are concrete asphalt sheet metal and plastic polymers and next we'll see what are the materials for sloped roof asphalt composition shillings it is made up of organic paper fiber or fiberglass fused with asphalt and coated with mineral granules it is more resistant to fire the cost is low to moderate metal roofing shingles this is the combination of steel aluminum copper and zinc alloy the durability of this material is depending on the coating by zinc or by protective painting it is a lightweight and has a high scrap value next is a clay tile roof it is made up of natural clay fired in clay most commonly used to roof material it has excellent fire resistant whereas the durability is low and the weight is high though it is a brittle nature used in recent construction in top roofing for elegance of the building slate roof it is made from naturally available rock stone 
it is impervious to moisture and fire it is expensive due to its energy required in making the tile concrete tile roof this type of tile readily available versatile material which is made from plain cement concrete used for sloped roof it looks like a clay tile it's a long lasting material and good resistant to wind fire and water also free maintenance concrete slab for flat roof in this reinforced cement concrete is used for making slab it is a more durable strength resistant to all climatic conditions and can be used for the construction of multi story buildings but the demerits are it requires a time for setting and hardening of cement and also continuous curing is necessary for improving the strength next we'll see what are the classifications in ceiling ceilings are classified based on the appearance and materials the first one is a flat it is a conventional type of ceiling and mostly used in all buildings with a standard height of 3 meter coffered ceiling the effect of coffered ceiling creates wafer like pattern it is made up of grid of shunken panels with octagonal or square shapes suspended ceiling it is also termed as drop ceiling it is a secondary ceiling which is hanged below the flat ceiling with the lightweight ceiling panels fixed by metal hangers or wires cathedral ceiling ceiling is constructed with equally sloping sides that are joined at highest point or peak of the roof like upside down v shape it creates feeling of spacious open and ventilation in building church ceiling is the best example for this next is a cove ceiling in this type of ceiling there is a transition curved cornice is laid between the joint of wall and ceiling the smooth corners makes the building hollow soft and graceful next is a tray ceiling for aesthetic purpose tray ceiling is constructed with rectangular at center and propped out or inverted around the corners this type of ceiling is usually provided in kitchen and dining rooms as two levels of ceilings are provided it makes a smaller height room look taller vaulted ceiling This type of ceiling has unequal sloping sides given in a room. This is a symmetrical structure which gives appearance of a longer room. Next is a shed ceiling. It is uh, like a conventional flat ceiling type which incline upward from one side to another side of wall. This is constructed by laying unequal height of wall in opposite side. What are the causes of defects in roofs and ceiling? sagging will result due to inadequate design of roof structure where the rain water retained on the surface causes a potential problem to the building roof covering material will get failure due to the supporting structure moves proper surface coating should be given over the roof otherwise ceiling will be deteriorated improper joints between rafters in pitched roof finally we'll come to the conclusion of the session From this session you are able to understand the what all the functions of wall roof and ceiling also you you are able to receive the knowledge on classification types of materials used and defects in construction of wall roof and ceiling thank you